Hey guys, welcome to the Weekly Market Wrap Up. My name is Hannah Bernard and this is what mattered to us at VNN this week. Markets had a strong day on Thursday, mostly because of comforting words by Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke, who reiterated his position that monetary policy will remain aggressive for a while. All three major indices rallied for gains over 1%, with the Nasdaq being the clear winner, up 1.63% against the prior session. However, investors are still trying to handle the long-term implications of the Federal Reserve's FOMC meeting minutes that were released on Wednesday. Almost half of the Fed's policymakers indicated quantitative easing should be scaled back, but only under careful consideration of real job recovery. Ultimately, most policymakers felt that tapering was a good idea and that Mr. Bernanke should outline an exit strategy which can only lead us to believe that the Fed will end QE by year's end. Moving over to currencies, QE was definitely the biggest story since the 2008 financial collapse, helping feed liquidity in a time of absolute panic and crisis. So its closure will most likely generate some significant ripples. Some practical considerations to watch out for are first, the dollar-yen pair. Try not to get caught up with the current inability of the dollar-yen to drive confidently past the 100 mark. While the dollar itself may suffer some volatility, the long-term trend for the greenback is up. Basically, the dollar is losing the so-called currency war, and that might not be such a bad thing, considering its unique status as the world's reserve currency. And the euro currency. The euro is really suspect at this point, with its price action lingering below both the 50 and the 200 day moving averages. In fact, these two moving averages have converged to an extremely tight spread over the last two months, which should bring a great deal of concern to currency traders. Overall, the euro looks bearish. Moving over to our picks for the week to winners and losers. Our winner for this week is Bridgepoint Education, or ticker symbol BPI. BPI jumped up a whopping 26% against the prior session due to the fact that its Ashford University unit received accreditation. Accreditation is important because without it, a school can lose access to government financial aid. And with this cloud of uncertainty removed, the stock is far less speculative. Our loser for the week is Merrimack Pharmaceuticals Incorporated, or ticker symbol M-A-C-K. M-A-C-K tanked 28% evaluation in just one session, leaving investors reeling. The volatility was mainly due to the company filing to sell $50 million worth of common stock and $75 million in convertible senior notes. If there's any consistent theme in 2013, it's that low to mid-tier pharmaceutical companies are extremely speculative. Prior to today's sell-off, MAC shares rose under heavy accumulation at the end of June and with shares trading hands at 1,700% higher than average volume. However, the stock really didn't do much after that, setting up one of the biggest disasters for this week. Last but not least, let's talk about precious metals. Finally, we can report some good news for precious metal investors, starting with gold. The price action has been rising all week under consecutively stronger accumulation, giving credence to bullish speculation. This week has largely been helped by a weaker dollar, which has now lost nearly 3% evaluation in just two days. Over to Silver, also joining the party, finally closing above the $20 mark after a three-week hiatus. Like gold, the volume accumulation has been getting incrementally stronger and the near-term forecast should be positive for the white metal. Ultimately, however, a careful eye needs to be placed on the interest rates and other economic indicators as the metals are still susceptible to a sentiment whiplash over the long term. Palladium continues to be the best performing precious metal, with the price now firmly above the $700 mark. Keep in mind that when interest rates rise and the S&P futures rise, cyclical companies such as consumer goods and auto manufacturers tend to as well. The current environment, both in terms of supply and demand and macroeconomic cycles, favor palladium more so than silver and gold. And that wraps it up. Thank you so much for joining us for a weekly market wrap up. You can email me at hannah at viralnetworknews.com. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. For VNN, I'm Hannah Bernard.